This is a WIAT 42 special report. It's been an interesting year in the state of Alabama. It said the officer didn't have the right to enter the apartment at that time. From cops caught on tape. Stop, stop. Confederate flag controversy. Because the flag's gonna live on. It is offensive to some people. And the resurrection of football in the Magic City. We're taking steps to reinstate the football rifle and bowling programs. The WIAT 42 News team is committed to covering the stories that affect you. Join us right now as we cover some of the biggest stories of 2015. Good evening and thanks for joining us. This is a WIAT 42 News special report. I'm Lee Garner. For the next 30 minutes, we will recap some of the biggest stories to happen right here in central Alabama. The year began with freezing temperatures and winter weather that closed schools and stranded drivers along area roads. We called our March winter coverage storm track ice. WIAT 42 News reporter Jamie Ostroff shows us how bad things got here in the Birmingham area. All's clear now, but it did take crews quite some time to clean up the wreckage of some 20 cars and trucks. Every two minutes, it was cars sliding. Commuters described the chaos of losing control on an icy interstate. The bridge was icy, and uh, we started sliding by on the bridge, slid all the way into the over into the grass of the hill. Jeremy Jones told WIAT 42 News that he hit two other cars in the process. Jerry Couch was driving by when he saw the wreck and pulled over to help when his car became a part of the pileup. My truck was over there. I came up here and about that time, caught me. It was just like you said, a domino effect. Just cars just sliding, not paying attention or slowing down. 20 vehicles total smashed and scattered across the road, according to the Department of Transportation. That included several tractor trailers that flipped over. Police say some people had to be cut from their cars with the jaws of life. Three adults and two children were taken to hospitals, two of those adults as trauma patients. This is why we always say, you know, if you can, avoid the roadways. The single most powerful word in our democracy is the word we. We the people. We shall overcome. Yes, we can. That word is owned by no one. It belongs to everyone. Oh, what a, what a glorious task we are given to continually try to improve this great nation of ours. Our next top story involves the commander-in-chief himself as he addresses thousands gathered to commemorate a pivotal moment in the struggle for civil rights. President Barack Obama made not one but two visits to the state of Alabama. His first visit took him to Selma, where he helped lead the march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge for the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. WIAT 42 News reporter Chris Womack was there as thousands joined the president to mark the occasion. The significance of the 50th anniversary of the march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge is clear. When you look at the bridge, there is not a spot of pavement that you can see. And those people hope that people understand just why they're here. Bloody Sunday, that day meant we have a voice, we have a right to vote today. Um, it meant freedom. We experienced a lot of the issues yet pending uh, uh, civil rights and uh, uh, sanctions or whatnot, you know. Some wouldn't know because they are far removed from the tragedy that turned triumph in Selma 50 years ago. Still, they come. To, to, to learn a little bit of history, to let us know what, what our people went through to get us to what we were able to do today. And to learn what steps to take next. No justice! No peace! Protests were a plenty, and many marchers tell me they feel we haven't come as far with race relations as a lot think. We are going to have to work together. We have to sit down at the table and come up with a plan to work together. But the most important thing is unity. Even with the sheer magnitude of today's events, they all told me there was one thing that made this weekend especially important. And that, of course, was the presence of President Barack Obama. In Selma, Chris Womack, WIAT 42 News, coverage you can count on. Every year, millions of Americans take out these payday loans. Here in Alabama, there are four times as many payday lending stores as there are McDonald's. Think about that, because there are a lot of McDonald's. 
Less than a month later, President Obama heads back to the state, this time to the Magic City. On March 26th, the president landed at the Birmingham Shuttlesworth International Airport en route to Lawson State Community College. But this visit wasn't to commemorate a special occasion. It was to take uh, care of a little business. And as WIAT 42's Lillian Lalo shows us, the crowds were ready to hear what he had to say. From the front of the line to the back, and everything in between. Students and community members of all ages spent the majority of their day in line. It was kind of like a once in a lifetime opportunity. And they say it was worth it. We are very excited, excited. very excited. It made a remarkable moment to see this man come down and talk to us, the first black president. It's just a it's just something I'm supposed to be a part of. We did have one pretty close. It was Earth, Wind, and Fire. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> this man was the very first in line. Well, I hope I'm uh, real close so I get to see in real, real, real view of his face and everything. And this group of Lawson State staff stuck together. To like jump for joy. Yes, Once yes. in a lifetime experience. Yes. <laughs> After the president's speech ended, memories of waiting for hours on end were overshadowed by the experience of listening to his speech in person. Senior pastor Shannon Webster with First Presbyterian Church was called out personally by the president for his work against payday lending. I was stunned and uh, very honored uh, about that and it was a surprise. Lonnie Hodge served as the sign language interpreter and says it was an experience of a lifetime. I've interpreted for about seven years now, um, but this is obviously the first time I've been asked to um, interpret for a dignitary like Obama and so it was a very cool experience. I mean, and Richard Crawford got his perfect seat after all. Probably one of the most important days of my life. And the president's biggest talking point was about the practices of payday and title loan businesses. Our Sherry Jackson has more on what the president had to say about them here in the Birmingham area. If you're lending to somebody knowing they can't pay you back and you're going to put them on the hook and just squeeze them harder and harder and harder and take more and more money out of them, you're taking advantage of them. The president announced a new initiative of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau during his speech at Lawson State today. The CFPB announced today that it's going to take important steps towards protecting consumers from getting stuck into these cycles of debt. It's something Birmingham District 8 City Councilor LaShonda Scales has been doing on the local level for some time, passing the first local moratorium on new payday lending and title loan companies opening up in her district in 2011. She took it a step further in 2013. Okay, well, we'll make it a local law that they at least have to be, if you want to be a new payday loan or title loan company, you have to be 2,000 feet apart. Do you find that these companies are willing to try to work with communities? No, no. I think what they have done is they have made a billion dollar industry very profitable and is based on people not being informed fully in terms of what they're being engaged to do. We learned today that there are some in the Alabama legislature trying to work together to address the extreme interest being charged at some payday lending businesses. District 57 state representative Marika Coleman is now on a legislative banking and insurance committee. What is it that we don't know about why the state can't get a grip on it? Well, actually, we did pass a bill back in 2003, but the problem was, this is my first year serving in the Alabama legislature, the problem with the legislature is when they take up an issue, they think they've dealt with it. Um, through a loophole, the industry still has been able to charge people more than 400% interest. So now we're having to revisit that. But the visit she's focused on today, like so many in her district where Lawson State Community College sits, is this one from the President of the United States. We've got much more ahead in our WIET special report of the top stories of 2015. We'll look back on how a preemptive move by Governor Robert Bentley caused an uproar among Confederate flag supporters in the state. And speaking of uproar. And my son has said it many, many times. If it hadn't been for UAB football, he would not be in the job he's in today. He would not be the person he is today. Last year's decision to end UAB football doesn't sit well with fans and students alike. A look back at the effort to resurrect the game. Given the broad base of support never before seen, as of today, we are taking steps to reinstate 
the football, rifle, and bowling programs. On June 1st, we officially learned the news many had been waiting months to hear. Football is back at UAB. Our next top story is something we covered for several months. From the moment UAB President Dr. Ray Watts announced the ending of the football, bowling, and rifle programs. WIAT 42 News reporter Michael Oder was there as fans finally got the good news that they had just won the battle to bring the Blazers back. Good guy, we thank you so much for this opportunity. A group prayer Monday afternoon as UAB supporters gathered in front of the University Administration Building. They were waiting for University President Dr. Ray Watts to announce the return of football, bowling, and rifle. We're not buying in now, we've always been bought in. So uh, the idea that you had to go out to get a bunch of money, it was already here, you know, and we, we give as much as we possibly can. We'll continue to do that, you know, and, uh, but we're just, going, we're just excited, more than excited right now. So I don't know what to say. But Parents of former UAB football players showed their support as well. For them, they say football at UAB is more than just a game. And my son has said it many, many times. If it hadn't been for UAB football, he would not be in the job he's in today. He would not be the person he is today. Family on three. Family on three. One, two, three. Family! The news over the reinstatement of football and other programs at UAB came with plenty of reaction from city leaders. WIAT 42 News reporter Alex Finney has more on their thoughts on June's announcement. We call ourselves the football capital of the South, and without a major football program, uh, you know, it's hard to maintain that, 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 that title. Well, now it's a title that the South will continue to wear proudly. I think we have an opportunity to really build something great. But for some, this opportunity is a little too late. My heart hurts for my son. You know, I mean, this was the school he chose. And so it, it hurts my heart to know that, it's, you know, that he can't be here. Julia Blankenship's son was number 71. He retired his UAB jersey after the school decided to cut the football program. You know, they're excited it's back, but they're angry because, you know, it never should have happened in the first place, and now they're not here. 98 players were hit with the news back in December. Offensive lineman Cameron Blankenship was one of many who transferred out of UAB. I mean, it was like, hurry up, you have to pick a school, you know, you have to get moved, you have to do this, you have to do that. For six months, players, students, and the surrounding community were stuck in limbo, and now all three athletic programs are back. Hopefully by the private sector and uh, governmental entities coming to the support of the program with financial contributions, the fan base will improve, the fan base will grow, and that's how you build a strong program. It has become a distraction all over uh, the country right now. Uh, off and on, it's always been a distraction. Uh, you know, the uh, Confederate flag was removed from the Capitol Dome uh, around 1992, 1993. Uh, and uh, had I been governor then, I would have done the same thing then. A symbol of slavery and racism to many, the Confederate flag has been a source of pride to others. After more than 50 years of flying on state capitol grounds, on the morning of June 24th, Governor Bentley ordered that those flags come down. Michael Oder looks back on the day down in Montgomery. Capitol grounds crews took down four Confederate flags Wednesday afternoon. The flags were around a memorial to Confederate soldiers on the north side of the Capitol building. Mike Williams is with the Sons of Confederate Soldiers in Alabama. He's bowing to political pressures. Williams disagrees with Governor Bentley, who ordered the flags taken down. Well, part of his reasoning was we need to move that focus so I can bring my tax package in. I'm probably as disappointed in his tax proposal as I am he has taken the flags down because the flag's going to live on. It is offensive to some people, especially one type flag is offensive to some people because unfortunately it's like the swastika. Some people have adopted that as part of their maybe hate-filled groups. Governor Bentley talked about the flags while in Hackleburg. Reaction came from all over the state, including Birmingham Mayor William Bell. I don't want to see people get carried away, but that flag represented something evil. It represented something that uh, really marginalized a group of people, and we're, we're glad that the governor made that decision. Jamel Brown with Representative Alvin Holmes' office said the issue with the flag isn't history, it's those who hijack it. We're not going against those that 
want to use this flag as their history and heritage. We support them on that. But you have others out there that don't believe that it's just for history and heritage. They use it for their ammunition to go out there and kill and harm minorities here in the country. Speaker of the House Mike Hubbard ordered the Confederate flag be removed from the old House chamber inside the Capitol building. A Confederate flag inside the old Senate chamber was removed as well. Uh, since March, uh, I've been around the state uh, continuously telling the people of the state that uh, if we didn't adequately fund the general fund, then uh, essential services of government would be cut. A dire warning from the governor, a move to shut down driver's license offices across the state and other big budget cuts. Then cops caught on video, Alabama joins the discussion over allegations of excessive force by police officers. Let's move forward a few months to September 30th, when people across Alabama learned of the plan to close dozens of driver's license offices across the state. The plan was to centralize services in four regional locations, although that plan has since been changed. It definitely caused quite an uproar throughout the state. WIAT 42 News reporter Stefan Dingle shows us how much. 31 driver's license locations around the state closed for good. Since March, uh, I've been around the state uh, continuously telling the people of the state that uh, if we didn't adequately fund the general fund, then uh, essential services of government would be cut. I think it's very inconvenient. I think it's, um, I don't know. Many of the locations on the lengthy list include Bibb County, where resident Linda Johnson says even there, the satellite location was only open one day out of the week on Thursdays. It's very disappointing because I've always used this place and we just moved to Bibb County not too long ago. We just built a house down the street and I thought that it would be very convenient for us to come here. Convenience in the budget is what Governor Bentley and lawmakers were looking for and according to him, decisions weren't easy. One of the things that we have to realize is that we didn't win the war, but we won some battles. The uproar over the office closures led to federal investigations on the plan's constitutionality. In Alabama, you must have a photo ID in order to vote. The first phase of closures happened in predominantly African-American counties. The concern from investigators was that the closures could disenfranchise voters in those areas. But driver's license offices weren't the only victims to budget cuts this year. Several state armories and parks were forced to close as well. Officials say the parks that closed attracted less than 50,000 visitors each year and cost more to run than they brought in. Well, we now turn to the month of November when Tuscaloosa's police chief addressed concerns over officers captured on video arresting three University of Alabama students. That video went viral with complaints of excessive force. The actual arrest happened on November 8th. WIAT 42 News reporter Tim Reed recaps reaction from the police chief. Well, this video was released because we want to be transparent and show that we have nothing to hide. Tuscaloosa Police Chief Steve Anderson released police body camera video from an incident on November 8th at the Morgan Apartments. No, sir. I will not come out. Maybe a crime wow. area. Change it to a 1080. Because I want the number. Excuse me. Excuse me. Officers responded there for a loud music complaint. UA students Matthew Messia, Brandon Williford, and Carolyn Giddis were arrested for obstructing governmental operations, resisting arrest, and harassment. But my opinion of what I've seen in the video is that the officer didn't have the right to enter the apartment at that time, and, and neither did he have the uh, right to remove the individuals from the apartment. Chief Anderson didn't pull any punches. He says the video shows what the officers did was the wrong procedure. Former Tuscaloosa County Sheriff Ted Sexton agrees. Uh, the officer appears to be in the wrong in that he entered the house uh, uh, without standing or without cause. The footage later shows three officers, James Kent, Philip Champion, and Officer Gregory Pym, arresting the students using a taser and a baton. We're investigating that to see if the amount of force that was used was excessive in any way. And if it was excessive, in our opinion, then we would deal with that officer uh, or those two officers that were involved in that incident. And those officers were placed on administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation.
I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's very versatile, you know, with the guys that we got. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing, seeing what we can do with this offense. An unsure start for Alabama reveals a pretty stellar season after it's all done. We'll look back at the Tide season after the break. It started off as a shaky season with plenty of doubt from fans and foes alike. But earlier this month, the Alabama Crimson Tide turned the tables and brought home another SEC championship. The Crimson Tide grabbed that championship with a 29-15 victory over Florida. They'll now face off against Michigan State in the Cotton Bowl on December 31st. Well, but things didn't start off so victorious for the Tide and WIAT 42 News and sports reporter Nick Gula shows us how skeptical the season started out for the team. Alabama's offense under Nick Saban has been a steady evolution. The last eight years have seen the best offenses in school history. But with only two returning starters on that side of the ball, the Tide are once again changing things up. You know, we want to be known as fast, explosive, quick, you know, an offense that runs a lot of plays. That concept, along with the usage of play cards, sounds a lot like a no-huddle approach. But Coach Saban says it will influence the Tide's offense, not define it. It's just a methodology of how some people uh, get formations and plays in the game to sort of minimize uh, terminology and how much communication you have to have at the line to call a play. Alabama has to replace 70% of the team's receiving yards, but they feel they have the guys to do it. But Darius is as talented, probably, probably the most talented guy that we have, and, and has made some significant plays, um, even in games or in, um, in the spring. Uh, Robert Foster has flashed um, very fast, showed us a really good skill set. Um, again, just need to continue to be more consistent. Uh, we got a lot of guys that can that can really contribute to this offense. Uh, I think it's I think it's, it's very versatile, you know, with the guys that we got. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing seeing what we can do with this offense. In Tuscaloosa, Nick Goulas, WIAT 42 Sports coverage you can count on. The winner of this year's Heisman Trophy is Derek Henry. And fresh from the SEC Championship, Crimson Tide running back Derek Henry brings home the Heisman. To Coach Saban, a great ambassador, man, the, the man who believed in me by recruiting me, ranking me to the University of Alabama, seeing me grow as a player and as a person. You're a loyal coach. You always challenge us. And um, I just love you, Coach, man. Henry's win comes after his record-breaking season for the Tide and the best season in SEC history. Henry is the 14th winner of the Heisman from the Southeastern Conference. While the Tide battles for another national championship, the Auburn Tigers gear up for one last game this year. They are headed to the Magic City to face off against Memphis in the Birmingham Bowl. That's on December 30th. And remember, for all of our coverage, you can count on all year long. Go to our website, WIAT.com. We want to thank you so much for joining us on this WIAT special report of the top stories of 2015. I'm Lee Garner, and for all of us here at WIAT 42, we hope you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we'll see you back here at 6 for the WIAT Storm Track Weather Special. For now, have a great evening.